oof, gets harder and harder to squeeze into this spacesuit, let me tell you. All right, there it is. Hello again. So I'm here today to share with you what I think is a really interesting pathway to turning your Blender creations into social experiences that you can share with a link. The Hubs Blender Exporter is a Blender add-on that makes it easier for you to adapt Hub-specific functionality to your Blender creations. There are a few prerequisites I think I should probably mention before we get into the Exporter add-on itself though. The first one is called Spoke. So Spoke is a web-based scene creation tool for Hubs that allows you to publish 3D scenes that you can deploy with a few clicks. You might find it useful as a compositor or you might elect to import your GLB directly. For more information about GLTF, GLB, you can visit the Kronos group. Oh, gotta fly over here for this next part. Let's see if I got it. So I'm gonna be going over many, many components, but the takeaway I hope everybody gets from this is just a kind of an overview of what's possible. So let's start by just bringing in the Hubs Blender exporter into Blender. So you'll grab that from the releases page and then um, you'll just install it as you would another add-on for Blender. You can check the versioning there. And once you install it, you'll see right here on the material properties, you have all of these components. So what this is doing is it's just adding components to the JSON here, like you see in the example with billboard and UV scroll. So we have more in the documentation about what to look out for when you're exporting GLTF uh, and GLB in this case um, from Blender. So I recommend checking that out. That's in the for creator section of the docs. You can see that here. All right, so let's just uh, look at a quick example of what does it look like just to bring in a GLB. The hubs components are down here, but I'm not gonna um, add those in quite yet. I just wanna show what the flow looks like um, for exporting a GLB into hubs directly. So we're just gonna go uh, to export the GLB and uh, again, the details on that, we should check the docs for, but um, Basically, once you have it in hubs, it looks like this. And you can just drag the GLB onto the window and, or you can use the place menu to bring it in like this and then people can interact with it. So let's just start off with the billboard component. Uh, this one's a good candidate for that. And I'll just select the object and add billboard. And you'll usually have some options down here that you can select and play with. And then when I export that same object back into that room, we can see that it now has uh, the billboard effect and it faces the user wherever they are in the room. So that's a pretty fun, simple one. I think it's a good one to start off with. And we've seen, uh, we've seen some examples in the community of it being used. And I really like this one. Uh, it's an onboarding scene for hubs. that just worked really nicely. Another interesting thing you can do with Billboard, and this wasn't obvious to me at first, is you can um, Billboard specific components within, another, within a model that's static, right? And get some creepy effects with eyes. I think these two things, I think uh, very three-dimensionally. Uh, another component that is, a, I think, a really interesting one I wanted to mention is UV scroll. So this is kind of an a, a interesting way to get performant 2D animations. Um, I can actually do a quick, let's do a quick change. Let's see if this worked. Last time I didn't do too well in the last take. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, we got some UV scroll here. We and it's kind of messing with my green screen. Avatar change. 
But this scene is really great just for um, kind of playing with all those values and understanding uh, what they do. So Jim put this together and I think it's a nice way to, to learn about it. Um, you could also use sprite sheets. And in this example, I think it's a really nice kind of way to show that you can use UV scroll to create these sort of tranquil and meditative spaces. It's a really nice one. Uh, next up, we have video texture source and texture target. Um, and these are just in-room cameras, um, but what they're doing is we're taking a camera node and we are mapping the output of that camera onto a uh, surface, so um, onto the UV uh, map. So um, one thing to note about this is that the node itself is not going to be visible. So if you do want people to interact with your camera, you should give them something to interact with. But here's a really quick demo I did um, for you all just to show how to implement this. So uh, you have a plane with a texture, you have a camera, and you're gonna add the, the um, exporter component, the source there. And then you have some options. Um, and here you're, you're actually not gonna do it in the materials properties. It's gonna be, or sorry, in the object properties, it's gonna be in the materials. Um, so you can add the video texture there and then point it to that camera. All right, and then you're ready to export, but this is and this was a huge uh, thing for me that I kept missing and it took me a long time, so I wanna mention it. Uh, you have to remember to export that camera with, it, uh, with the GLB. And once you export it, it should look like this in hubs. So looking at some more advanced examples that Jim put together for us, um, we have this kind of funhouse mirror, which is an interesting effect. We have the cylinder, and um, and then another thing that you can do is animate the camera itself with this plane, which I try to follow. Also, you can bump down the resolution to get this kind of effect. All right, next up, in-room microphones and speakers with audio target and zone audio source. Now, these, um, what I find really interesting about this is it creates kind of this uh, like outdoor, uh, like what you would expect in an outdoor situation uh, where you have these, uh, these speakers outside. Um, you get kind of this delay, which you can control. And you can see that the sound is coming. Uh, there's an avatar on the stage and the sound's coming out of those speakers. Really um, nice implementation of this is the Forest Floor Meetup, which is used as a venue for an open mic for poetry. So this is the audio zone. So audio zones, uh, this is something I'm really excited to see people play with more. And this scene is really great for just exploring what audio zones can do and you can see on the walls they have the parameters that you want to use to get that effect so um, taking going into the scene with a teammate or a friend is a really fun way to play play around with audio zones and sort of get a feel for uh, what all those parameters mean um, it wasn't really that intuitive for me uh, i don't have a lot of experience with audio and so it wasn't really intuitive for me to uh, make these um, in, in the beginning and still not, <laughs> but there's documentation uh, on under the spoke documentation here on the, on the hubs website that can help with that. And we get asked a lot, is there a way to make a stage where everyone can hear you? Uh, so I wanted to demonstrate that really quickly for you with this test. Testing audio zones with this great avatar by Imaginer called Tree Z Top. Let's go. Let's get my guitar here and
dancing as a tree in a web page. Great. <laughs> so we have the Moz Lightmap component. Now this is added in the shader editor and um, you can see how that setup looks here. The big gotcha for me here was the UV maps. You have to use the second slot. And honestly, I think the best way to go about uh, using this is to first just check out the Jim and Dom tutorial on the Mozilla Hub's Vimeo and YouTube channels. Oh, and here's a great example from Connor. And this is all before the environment settings component, which just came out, which is our next uh, component. And with the environment settings, um, you want to find this in the scene properties, which again, I took me forever to find that. So you'll add it there. And uh, this is used for reflections as well as applying image-based lighting to objects, um, you know, that don't already have a light map. You can see a great example of it here. Yeah, and there's just so much uh, I'd like to show everybody, but there's just not enough time. <laughs> so I put together a couple more examples here. This is nav mesh. So the nav mesh is also uh, a component where you can edit and manipulate that in Blender. Spawners and media frames. This is a really interesting combination to me. Uh, it seems like some interesting interaction to be had. And why not stick a point light on an avatar? Sure. Or shadows. You can see the robot shadow just dancing there. And we have these components called scale audio feedback and morph audio feedback that respond to audio. All right, thanks everybody. That's all the time I have in that spacesuit. So just wanted to also invite everyone to our community meetups Fridays at 11.30 a.m. Pacific. If you have any questions or just want to stop by and show us what you're working on. Thanks so much.